today we're making this dynamic bar graph in 3D space in Fusion. And even if you don't know a lot about 3D, this is gonna be pretty simple and really fun. We're gonna dive into expressions and linking things together with controls, and it's just gonna take a few minutes to get something looking really nice. All right, here we are in the Fusion page of DaVinci Resolve. I just have a new Fusion comp open, and I'm gonna start by taking a background and just dragging that in and putting that into the media out. That'll make a black screen. I'll also go up to workspace and uncheck show page navigation just to give us a little bit of room here. All right, let's start with a nice background here. This black background, instead of solid color, let's switch this to four corner and we're going to pick maybe some kind of light blue, something like that for the top left. Top right, let's do maybe a kind of a darker blue and then bottom left, let's do the same dark blue and bottom right, let's do the same light blue. Look at this. That's just a nice little easy way to make a nice little background. That's just a good time. So now that we have an awesome background, let's get down to business. The way that we're going to make these 3D bars is by extruding a shape. So if you're not familiar with shapes, if you go up to the effects panel under tools, under shape, there are a whole bunch of different shapes that you can generate with Fusion. And it's kind of its own system. And so you have to have some way to generate a shape, like let's say S rectangle, but you also have to run that through an S render because a shape, I can bring this up in my left viewer here and kind of preview the shape, but it's really just math. It's not really an image yet. And just like a 3D mesh is kind of just math, it's not really an image until you plug it into some kind of renderer. And so this S render is going to render this as an actual image. It's important to realize that you can't merge merge a S rectangle over a 2D image like this, but you can merge an S render. So if you ever have trouble with shapes, that might be one of the reasons. But we're gonna take this S rectangle and let's just push up the corner radius a little bit. And you can think of this as sort of like looking down from perfectly on top of a 3D bar like a cube, you know? And so we have kind of these nice rounded corners and we're gonna take this 2D shape and we're gonna extrude it into 3D. So we're actually not even gonna use this S render. We're gonna run this through an effect called extrude 3D. And now if I hit two on the keyboard, we have our 3D space. I can hold down alt and click and drag on my scroll wheel here to kind of orbit around this. And you'll see that this is just like a 2D plane, okay? It doesn't have any thickness. When we take this extrude 3D and we push up this extrusion depth, look at that, it starts to get thicker. Now we're really only seeing the silhouette of this because we don't have any kind of lighting on. So if we go up here to this white circle and go down to lights or shadows, then we can kind of see some default lighting and actually see some shape here. So if we take this extrude 3D and we pump up this extrusion depth to like one, let's say, we can kind of zoom out by holding control and rolling on the scroll wheel. And now we have this extruded shape. You can push up the bevel depth and the bevel width to have a nice kind of bevel to the edges there. And this is going to work really well for our 3D bars. And in this extrude 3D node, let's go over to transform. And here under rotation, under X, let's type negative 90. And that's going to kind of set this on its side. And so now we have this extruded shape. And again, if I go to controls and mess with the extrusion depth, look at that. Look at this. Look at what's going on. Look at this one. Look at that one. We have a 3D bar that we can make big or small. This is like most of what we need to do. We're like almost home free. Okay, so that's cool. Let's go to material and we can select override diffuse color and we can color this somehow. So let's just make it like, a, I don't know, like a red or something. Yeah, maybe like a dark red. That's cool. And there's our bar. Now we want multiples of these. And so let's do something tricky. Let's use this same S rectangle and I'm going to copy this extrude 3D and paste it here and just push this S rectangle right into that extrude 3D again. And that's going to make just a copy of what we already have going on. But I can take this transform and maybe move this over a little bit. And so now if we look at this extrude 3D, it's over here and this one is over here. So we're kind of like offsetting them, right? It'd be great if we could actually see these both at the same time. So let's go to our 3D nodes here and there's one called Merge 3D. Now, a Merge 3D is like when you take a 3D object and you put it into a 3D world. Basically, this is like its own kind of group or its own, I, I don't know, like little 3D space. And we can plug multiple extrude 3Ds into this Merge 3D. And then if I hit two on the keyboard for that Merge 3D, look, we see both of them. Nice. And you see what we're getting at here. So this is one of those. I'll hit copy, control C, double click off and hit control V. And we'll plug the same S rectangle into that. Take the output and plug that into Merge 3D. And we'll move this over like this and so on. Look at what we're doing here. That's really neat. Then let's do one more bar. C, double click off, control V, copy and paste that, plug that into Merge 3D like this. Look at this. We got a little spider going on. We'll move this one over too, something like that. So now we have our four bars and we could make like a little Verizon wireless thing going on here by just messing with the extrude depth. Maybe this one will be like two. This one will be like 1.5, right? See what we're doing here? We got full bars, baby. Can you hear me now? Good. 
We could even change the colors here. If we go to material, I don't know, maybe we'll make one kind of a pinkish purple, make this one more of a blue, make this one kind of a green. Yeah, we can make those different colors. You see what we're getting at here? This is so cool. Let's put them on like a little shelf. We can do that just by adding a basic shape 3D. Take this and plug this into our merge 3D. That'll add it to our world. And instead of a plane, let's make this a cube. And I'll uncheck lock width, height, depth so that I can change those. We'll just make this a lot wider. Take the height down. Depth is probably okay. We'll just kind of put that on a little shelf. Nice. And we'll bring this down to be about touching the bottom of those bars. So neat. So we're kind of just roughing this in right now. And now to really see this as an image, we're going to need to use a renderer just like we were going to use the s render let's use our renderer 3d we'll just plug this merge into that renderer 3d let's see what that looks like oh baby it looks bad that's because we need some lighting so let's add a light one thing we could do would just be to add a spotlight like this plug this into our merge 3d and make sure in our renderer 3d we're enabling lighting and shadows now let's just take our merge 3d up here and make sure we can see our spotlight kind of move that around and point this where it's supposed to go. There we go. Kind of put this over to the side. There we go. And we'll push up the cone angle a little bit. Just make sure that's a little bit wider. Go over here and show lights and shadows and everything. Here we go. We'll just pull this. Make that a nice wide light. Yeah, there we go. We're just lighting the front of it like that. And that works. Really simple lighting. In fact, maybe I'll take it from the top a little bit more and rotate that downwards. That'll be probably just fine for now. Our framing for our actual render kind of sucks. So an easy way to adjust that is to add a 3D camera. You can just drag this down here, plug this into our Merge 3D. And by default, it's going to use whatever camera we have connected there. And here in our Merge 3D, we can move our camera around to be just how we want it. Let's take this focal length down a little bit. So we have a little bit wider angle on our camera. There we go. And now we have our 3D graph. Cool. So let's get organized here a little bit. Let's push up our 3D bars. Just kind of keep things reasonable. It's all going to go into the render of 3D. And let's take this render of 3D and merge that over the background. Hit two on the keyboard. Look at that. Now we have our nice little render and we're doing pretty good. If this is the kind of style we're after, then we're on our way. But one thing we want to do is probably mess with this lighting a little bit. Let's take this spotlight, add some linear decay, push up this intensity a little bit, maybe to like three, and then let's move this light around and maybe push it to the side a little bit. Yeah, we can combine that with something like a ambient light. I'm just bringing up this select tool palette with shift spacebar, plug some ambient light in there. That'll give us a little bit of fill. And yeah, that's looking pretty nice. You can push that up just a touch more. Make sure it's nice and bright. Now, the distance in between these bars is not exact. So let's get kind of fancy here because anytime that you're doing a bar graph, you're probably going to want to be able to change these values. You're going to want to be able to edit this without going in every single node and finding the right control and adjusting it, right? So let's work smarter, not harder. We're going to start linking some stuff together. And we can do that just by double clicking and not selecting anything and then just holding shift space bar and typing custom the second entry the custom tool if we hit that and add that the custom tool is a really neat node in fusion that just basically gives you a bunch of sliders and numbers and things that you can use with expressions and link up to other stuff it's just kind of a nice interface node and so to start out with i'm going to go over to config here and you can tick box any of these things that you want to show and i'm just going to turn off pretty much all of these for now just because it's less confusing okay turn off points turn off luts so now in our config since we have everything turned off if we go to controls there's nothing there but let's go back to config and we're going to make some fancy controls so let's say show number one and let's call this a spacing okay let's go over to controls and now we have this spacing slider and we're going to use this to control the actual spacing in between these bars and to do that i need to keep this around so i'm going to click this little pin button and that's going to keep these controls here in the inspector even when i don't have this custom tool selected very handy let's go to extrude 3d1 this is our purple bar here and go over to transform and this translation is 000, zero. so that's just going to be the first bar that sounds great. The second bar in transform is over like 0.8. So let's actually have this not be 0.8. Let's select this. And there's a few ways to do this, but we could just say equals and then hit enter. And that's going to add an expression. We can take this plus and pick any number, any slider or anything in the inspector to reference. And so I'm going to just pick this spacing right here. And that's called custom tool dot number in one. And then I'm just going to click off of that. So now as I push the spacing up, look what happens. Oh, it moves it over. Oh, baby. And surprisingly, at like 0.82, that's about right. How do we control these other?
other ones. Well, we can go to extrude 3D like this, go to the transform, and this is gonna be the third bar, this green bar. And let's just do a similar thing. Let's hit equals and then pick this spacing. But now let's do some quick math and just say times two. And now this space and this space are the same because it's this and multiples of it. Same thing for our fourth bar. Let's hook that up equals spacing times three. Now look at this. Now check this out. I can take this spacing and look. Oh man. Oh baby. Look at that. It's like a little, oh, we're just so freaking smart. How we get so smart. So you can hook up little controls to things in Fusion like this and just make your own little interfaces and stuff with custom tool. Oh, so neat. Okay. So let's just call this uh, controls. Yeah. This doesn't have to be connected to anything. It can just be sitting off to the side. doesn't matter. So now not only do we have everything spaced equally, but we can easily control the spacing just by sliding this slider. And we'll just leave it about there. I think that looks nice. Cool, right? By the way, if you're new to Fusion, make sure you don't miss my free nine nodes you need to make anything in Fusion workshop. There's a link right here or in the description. When you're just learning Fusion, it can be really confusing because there's, there's like hundreds of nodes. But the main daily driver nodes that I use for almost everything, there's only like nine nodes. And if you're feeling overwhelmed, that's really going to simplify things for you. That's my free gift to you. Check it out. Let's get back to the video. Now let's add some more controls here. We want to be able to control the height of these bars, not by going into extrude and changing the extrusion depth, but with a fancy little interface here on our inspector. So we can do kind of the same thing. We can go over to config and let's just say show number two. And let's just call this uh, bar one, go back over to controls. So here's bar one, this extrusion depth, instead of whatever that is, we're going to say equals and then connect that to bar one. Easy, right? So now this should be 0.2 and we can control that bar with this slider. Nice. Same thing for this next one. Let's rename these extrude 3Ds. So let's say um, bar one X 3D bar two X3D bar three, X3D bar four, X3D, yes. Okay, so bar two, let's make our controls here in this config. Let's just say bar two, bar three, bar four. Make sure we show those numbers. And now this second, this bar two is gonna be bar two. Bar three extrusion depth is going to be bar three. And bar four extrusion depth going to be bar four, right? So now we can easily just type in whatever we want, you know, so if it's like 0 0.2, 0 0.8, 0 0.6, 2, we can put in all of our numbers. Pretty sweet, right? Let's also add some labels here because we want to be able to show the percentage or the data here with some numbers and not just show the data with the bar graphs. So there's a lot of ways to do that. Let's do it a fancy way. How about that? Let's go ahead and make some 3D text and let's just go ahead and put this into its own 3D merge and we'll plug this merge into the next merge. So this merge, it sort of can kind of group things together if you put 3D things into it, their own 3D merge, just sort of like a 2D merge does. But now we have some text 3D and so we'll call this, you know, 34%, whatever. And we can see in our other merge here, there's our 34%. We'll take this 3D text and bring it forward like this and take the size down a little bit. And we'll just put this here right on this bar and we'll make it almost black. And heck, why don't we extrude it a little bit? Let's just extrude it, bevel it a touch. And we'll put this right on the edge of our little block here, put it on there like that. Okay, cool. So that's going to be right about where it's supposed to be. Just maybe make the size even a little smaller, something like that. Cool. And now guess what? We're going to do kind of a similar thing. This is going to be a uh, text one, copy, paste, put into the merge. It's going to be text two, copy, paste, paste, we'll do three and four. So we have all our text lined out here kind of in their own group. And you know what we might want to do is just line these up with that same X on the transform. So we can just copy and paste controls dot number in one for text two. Let's just say transform equals on the X and paste that in. Boop. There it is. Perfectly aligned. Bar three transform. Same thing. Bar four transform. Same thing. Copy and paste that over. So now those are right there in front of the bars and they're spaced the same. If we take this control and we change the spacing, those are going to listen to that same spacing, which is very nice. But these numbers don't really mean anything. So how do we do that? How do we change the text to be what these bars are? Well, here in our text controls, instead of saying 34%, Let's right click on this and go to expression. And now we can just take this little plus and drag it onto a property to type in that property as a variable. We probably don't want to keep it at 0.2. Maybe we want to multiply it. So let's do it like times 10. So now it's two, right? So it's 2%. And we probably actually want this to be 20%. So let's just say times 100. And so now that's 20. Okay. So we can take something like this, copy, 
And we can paste this into our text for each one of these. So right click expression and same thing, but instead of number in two, it'll be number in three. That's 80. Same thing for text three. And you just repeat this for however many bars you want. So be number in four, number in five, right? And now when we change these controls around, look at this, it changes it. Look at that. Oh, it's so cool. Now, Depending on if we want those decimal points or not, we could do some fancy stuff. For instance, we could use a little command called floor, like that, put that around it, and that's going to just round it down to the nearest integer. So we could put floor around stuff. We just do that for everything. Floor, put parentheses around that. And if you're not familiar with what this is, this is Lua scripting. And so if you can look up stuff in Lua, a lot of it you can use here in the expressions. It's not quite everything, but you can use quite a bit of the basic math and everything from Lua here. And so check this out. So now that we have our controls here, we can adjust our bar like this. And now we have this really neat way to be able to show data. So we can push these bars up and we have all of the data visualization here. Oh, it's just so neat to be able to make this stuff right here in Fusion. What a neat thing to be able to do. Now these shadows are acting a little strange, so I might even just turn off the shadows for this one. In our renderer, we could just turn off shadows. I think that's just a little bit cleaner looking. There are still a little bit of weird things with shadows sometimes. But yeah, now we can visualize some data here and we have this nice little rig. It's all controlled just with these little controls. Very cool. Let's put a little bit of finishing touches on here. Let's take our camera and viewing our merge, our main merge here. Let's do something that's really convenient with the 3D camera. If we go over to transform, there's a little tick box called use target. And when you click that, you can adjust the target for basically what the camera is looking at. And so we can kind of move this back and forth to track a subject or whatever we want the camera to look at. And we can put this target like right where it's supposed to be. So like sort of in the middle here, I'd say maybe up a little bit. And now we can move this camera and it will rotate to look at the target. And so see, we can do a lot of really cool stuff with our camera without having to keyframe the rotation and a bunch of stuff. It kind of automatically rotates and looks at things. So that's a really nice way to do it, I think. So we can animate this to maybe start here and we'll just animate this translation of our camera and then switch over to kind of the end. We'll just push this over like that. And now we have this motion sweep <laughs> with our camera. And then let's animate these bars on here. So with our controls, we'll have these all end up maybe at frame 70 right here. And then at frame zero, we'll have these all at zero. So now these kind of grow. <laughs> Look at that. And we can ease that animation with the spline panel. So we'll just grab all of our bars here and this end point, we'll just hit F on the keyboard to flatten those out. And we have those easing in like that. So they kind of slow down before they stop. It looks very nice. Look at that. Now we can visualize some data like a freaking beast. <laughs> so fun. And yeah, you can hook up these controls to just about anything. You know, we can adjust our spacing. We can add more bars, whatever we want to do. You can even make a template with bars, whatever you want to do with this. And it's pretty darn easy to make that happen. And then if you want to add more text, you can add that to our merge 3D, you know, so we could have something like, let's just remove this expression, you know, and we'll just push that down here. We can label it as puppies. <laughs> I don't know what your, what your, there's, there's 98 puppies over there, <laughs> but you get the idea. Take this and go wild with it. Okay. This is so much fun. And it's, it's not that hard to get something that looks really cool like this. If the 3d stuff is kind of confusing to you, open up some 3d nodes and start playing around. And after a while, it'll start to click. I promise you. And Hey, if you're new here, my name is Casey. And I like to teach fusion to people that don't know fusion people that are video editors and maybe want to spice up their videos a little bit. It's such a powerful program built right into DaVinci resolve. And I want you to know how to use it so you can make really cool stuff really easily. So stick around, subscribe if you haven't, and don't miss my nine nodes workshop that's available right here. It's a totally free little mini course that teaches you just the basics, the, the, the main things that you need to know about Fusion, and it's just, it's so helpful. Also have this video right here, which YouTube thinks is a really good idea for you to watch, and I do too, because I agree with YouTube. I am free to leave at any point. I'm here of my own will. <laughs>